No one has been here before. So first, start by learning the lessons that we did learn through this experience. Uh, and second, let's be smart about what we do. And I get the emotion, and I get the impatience, and I get the anxiety. We all feel it. Uh, when I say the situation is unsustainable, it's unsustainable on many levels. It's unsustainable economically. It's unsustainable personally. Uh, a lot of anxiety is uh, now all through our community. We see it in increased alcoholism, increased substance abuse, increased domestic violence. So this is a, a very, very difficult period, and people want to move on. Yes, but let's be smart about what we do, and let's learn the lessons. One of the lessons is we have never been here before, and we didn't really know what was going on. CDC releases a report end of last week that says the virus was actually coming to the East Coast from Europe. Everybody was looking at China for all those months. China, 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 China. Yeah, China was last November, December. The virus migrated from China while we were all staring at China and went to Europe. And the strain that came to the United States came from Europe. We had people in the airports stopping people from China, testing people from China. The federal government uh, did a lot of testing, a lot of screening, people getting off planes from China. Yeah, but meanwhile, the people from Europe were walking right past them. And that's where the strain came from that was infecting uh, this area, and that's uh, what the CDC just learned last week. And this is going back to February, right, on one of the most studied topics ever. Again, just uh, learn the lessons of what happened. You now add that piece of information on the Europe trips, and then you see the number of flights that came from Europe during that time, where they landed, and now you it explains why you've seen the outbreak in Chicago that you've seen, why you've seen the number of cases in New York. Because yes, the flights were landing here, people were coming from Italy and UK and from European countries and nobody thought to screen them, nobody was on guard. And you add that to the density of New York, especially in New York City. And that virus just took off, okay. We didn't know, we didn't know, now we do. Uh, we also can look back in history, you look at that 1918 flu pandemic that they talk about. The places that opened too soon saw that flu come right back. And by the way, that flu was not one wave, that was three waves. First wave, second wave, third wave. Second wave was worse than the first wave. Uh, and you see, watch the other countries that went through this before us, right? We're not the first one down the chute. There were other countries that went down before us. You see, they wanted to reopen also. They were feeling the pressure on reopening. And you study those cases and you see that you reopen too soon or you reopen unintelligently and you can then have an immediate backlash. Uh, and that's not speculation, that is looking at other countries and look at what, what has happened around the world. And then you talk to the experts who know, listen to what they're saying. Uh, Dr. Fauci, who I think is one of the uh, best voices and minds on this. Dr. Fauci has been through this in, in different iterations. He was one of the pioneers on the HIV virus uh, and AIDS, and he says, we could be in for a bad fall and a bad winter. Could be. Why? Because he doesn't know, he's not sure, but could be for a bad fall or bad winter. Okay, so put all of this in the, in the equation. And then also uh, acknowledge and actualize that the truth is that nobody knows what happens next and when it happens. Well, how can that be that nobody knows? We're so sophisticated. We have so much intelligence. We have so many experts. 
This is the United States of America. How can it be that no one knows? Because no one knows. I speak to the best experts globally, globally, and nobody can tell you for sure. Now, experts, we look to experts, and we expect them to know, so we push them to know. Answer the question, tell me when, what's going to happen in September, what's going to happen in December? Sometimes the answer is, I don't know. Sometimes that's the honest answer. I was talking to uh, my daughters last night, and they said, you know, you say at your briefings, I don't know. How can you say that? First, I'm not really sure they watch my briefings, but uh, they're right. Sometimes I say, I don't know. Why? Because I don't know. And if you don't know, say you don't know. And uh, I speak again to the best minds in this country, the best minds around the globe, and they don't know. So if you don't know, say you don't know. It doesn't mean you're not smart, no reason to get defensive. I don't know. When you know what you don't know and admit it, it will actually keep you safe. My daughters don't quite agree with this yet, but I haven't given up on the concept. Know what you don't know. Know when you don't know what the future holds. You can be safe because then you can prepare for different possibilities. And that's where we are. We don't know, but we will be prepared for all possibilities. So, reopening, chart a course with the best information you have, learning from the lessons you have, but be able to correct that course depending on what happens. Which means don't act emotionally, don't act because I feel this, I feel that, because someone said, well, other states are opening, so well, you must be able to open if other states are opening. Forget the anecdotal, forget the atmospheric, forget the environmental, forget the emotional. Look at the data, look at the measurements, look at the science, follow the facts. And that's what we've done here from day one. Uh, this is no uh, gut instinct. This is look at the data, look at the science, look at the metrics, move forward, measuring what you can and what you know, and then be prepared to adjust. Well, I want specificity. I want to know for sure. You don't. But there's liberation in knowing that. So let's do this intelligently based on metrics, and we'll see what happens, and we'll adjust to whatever happens. Well, what does that mean on metrics? You can measure this. And we have to measure this. You look at that percentage and the rate of hospitalizations, which we have, right? That's the chart that goes up and down. You watch that hospitalization rate. Do your diagnostic testing so you know how many people are testing positive, and you can watch that rate going up or down or flat. Do the contract tracing. So after the testing, you follow up and you do that contact tracing, and you are then reducing the infection spread by isolating the positives. If you do those things, you will control the rate of transmission of the virus, which is everything. Nobody says you're going to eliminate the virus in the short term. Nobody. But you can control the rate of transmission. And if you can control the rate of transmission, you can control the rate of transmission from becoming an outbreak or an epidemic or overwhelming your public health system. That is the best you can do. So control the rate of transmission to what they call 1.1 or less. 1.1 is every person infects 1.1 other people, more than one other person. If you're doing that, that is an outbreak. That means